Hi everyone. Thanks for dropping by my workbench this evening. Tonight I want to show you a little uh, kit that I assembled for my son who has some interest in uh, doing some Raspberry Pi projects and uh, needed a bit of help with uh, setting up some hardware for him to do such things in a safe manner. So what I put together for him is a little bit of a Raspberry Pi sandbox which uh, has a number of features for it which I'll go through now for you. The first being, of course, he's got AC power in, and I added an AC out outlet so that he can power different devices. Uh, a monitor for the Raspberry Pi, which is located here, for example. Um, I've also got a 7 amp circuit breaker to power the two power supplies that are located under this plate. One of them is a 12 volt 30 amp power supply. The other one is a 5 volt 3 amp power supply. Uh, going along the DIN rail here, I have three terminal blocks of green, white, and black, which is AC power in North America. Uh, those three terminals give him access to AC power, which is switched by the circuit breaker. Should he have a need to do some designs that need AC power and he just wants to prototype something together. So that's a safe manner to do it. Uh, I've also got a ground terminal block of five positions and I've got a two position red, which is five volt DC power supply which also powers the Raspberry Pi 3, the two LED meters, and the bank of relays that we see here. I have an eight channel relay bank, which is active low. You can buy these on eBay. Uh, there's also a little bit of a circuit board, breakout board that I mounted to the platen here, which will allow him to do some simple circuits if he decides to, uh, to design a couple little things. I've also got a Sonoff four channel pro uh, Internet of Things type uh, controlled switch. Uh, I've got it wired to my orange terminal blocks and to the yellow terminal blocks but actually what the yellow goes through is through this DC to DC converter before the output goes to the four channel or, or the two position yellow. So the reason for that is I want to be able to turn on the Sonoff which will provide power to this DC to DC converter which is currently set to approximately 3.3 volts and then the output of that goes directly to this terminal block for him to make quick connections to. So I'll go ahead and turn this on and a couple things will happen when I do that. One of course is the two meters will come on. These are Adafruit meters. One will show the 12 volts DC power supply output and one will show the 5 volts DC power supply output. output. We'll see the Sonoff uh, connect to my Wi-Fi so that I can uh, control it with my phone. And uh, the Raspberry Pi will automatically run a uh, galloping relay script that I made up to uh, test out the 8-channel bank and prove that the DIOs are functioning correctly. The general purpose interface pins are functioning correctly on the Raspberry Pi. Currently it's running headless so I don't have a monitor on it. I have power connected to it from the 5 volt DC power supply that's located under but I don't have a mouse or video monitor or keyboard connected to it. So the Chrome script will fire up the uh, Python script and we'll see the lights go through. So let me go ahead and turn that on and let's see those things come to life. So there we have our 12 volts DC power supplies on. There's a little bit of a green tinge down below that you may or may not see. The Raspberry Pi is coming to life, uh, indeterminate state on the LEDs. And we should see the script run, there it goes. Slow galloping lights. And at the same time, my Sonoff switch has connected to my Wi-Fi. I had originally planned, and I've left it in place, to connect uh, the, the relays to uh, 12 volts DC to be able to run, but I, I took that out so that I could power this first bank from the Sonoff. So you can see there with a simple switch or a GPIO controlled switch, you'd be able to turn the, the relays themselves on. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on my phone here real quick and uh, turn on via Wi-Fi. Uh, the four switches on the Sonoff. So switch number one, and you can see the red light came on. Switch number two, let me put that a little bit higher. Switch number three, 
And when I put on switch number four, which is my yellow circuit, the, my DC to DC converter will come on and we'll go to approximately three volts DC where I set it previously. So there it is, 3.32 volts. And we hear the fan down below come on. I'll go ahead and turn these off. One, two, and three. Now I'll leave number four on. And basically, number four is on. Uh, my DC to DC converter is at about 3.32 volts. And I'll pan over to my electronic load, my Kunkin KP184. So it's telling me that my DC output is currently 3.28 volts DC, which is fairly close to what my setting is. Uh, it's also putting out 4 amps. Recall that I've got it set, I have a fuse in there set to uh, 5 amps, so I don't want to over, allow overdriving the module and we're putting out 13.13 watts right now. So that's a nice little, nice little uh, DC to DC converter which does a pretty good job. I think it's rated at eight amps, so that's pretty nice. So I think he'll be fairly happy with that. He has control through potentiometer here of the voltage setting, so he could go probably a little bit lower to two and a half volts, all the way up to 12 volts because it is powered by the 12 volts DC signal that from the power supply down below. Uh, with that, like I said, I've got four fuses here. First fuse is for the first bank of three terminal blocks, second fuse, second bank, third fuse, third bank, and the, the fourth fuse controls power to the DC to DC converter over to the yellow. And of course, as I noted, all of these are control, controlled through the Sonoff 4 Channel Pro module. So that's it. Uh, everything seems to be functioning correctly. I'm fairly happy with this build. It took me a little bit of time to do, but uh, I think it all looks fairly decent. It's on a nice, uh, easy to carry platen. Um, should be fairly safe for him to com conduct a few experiments with. And that gives him some capability that I don't think he has at this time. So everyone, I want to thank you for sitting through and watching this video. Please feel free to leave comments. I do hope you'll take the time to like this video and uh, subscribe to my channel. That would help me a lot. I appreciate that very much. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.